One of the big problems with Wi-Fi is getting the best coverage in the office or in the home. In this video we're going to explain how Wi-Fi signals propagate or travel and using this knowledge we'll explain how you can install your router to give the best signal coverage and get the best performance and we'll give you some useful practical hints and tips on the way as well. Wi-Fi signals are like other radio signals although they're actually relatively high in frequency. Current systems operate at either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. That's 2.4 or 5,000 million hertz or vibrations per second. And this has an impact on how they travel. Like any other radio signal, Wi-Fi signals are subject to effects like path loss, absorption, refraction, diffraction and reflection. For the majority of Wi-Fi applications though, the main things we need to worry about are path loss, and absorption. So let's look at path loss first. Like all forms of radio wave, in fact all forms of electromagnetic wave, the signal strength reduces as it moves away from the source. As it spreads out, the signal intensity falls. In fact it falls according to an inverse square law. In other words, if the distance is doubled, the signal falls to a quarter. The other issue is absorption. Although air does not absorb Wi-Fi signals, many other media do, and being high in frequency, the levels of absorption can be higher than for signals that are lower in frequency. Things like wood, plastic and glass have relatively low levels of absorption. Water and plasterboard are medium, but things like thick brickwork, ceramic and concrete, especially reinforced concrete, can have very high levels of absorption. And of course, metal is not good news. Metal water tanks and even domestic appliances with their metal exteriors are definitely bad news if the signal needs to pass through them. Signal interference also has a bad effect and there are many sources of interference from other Wi-Fi routers to microwave ovens and the many forms of wireless or cordless items we have around the home these days. So what can we do? Here are five easy pointers to help get the best Wi-Fi performance. First, locate the router as centrally as possible. It may not always be easy, but by locating the router in a central position, we can minimise the distance signals need to travel. Second, we also need to make sure that the router is located so that the signal doesn't need to travel to anywhere you're going to use it a lot, through thick brick walls or anything else that might really absorb the signal. Third, in the same vein, keep the router off the floor, especially in offices. Signals like to travel in a line of sight, so keeping them down low means they have to travel through desks or furniture and wiring, and that's not good. Keeping them high gives them a better line of sight coverage. Fourth, interference can be an issue, so keep the router away from sources of interference. Microwave ovens are particularly bad, and if there are lots of other routers around, this could be a problem as well. Make sure you have a dual band router because most phones and laptops these days have a dual band capability. The most popular band is 2.4 GHz and this only really has a choice of three channels but 5 GHz has many more. Finally, if things are really bad in some locations in the home or office then there are still options like repeaters that pick up the signal and rebroadcast it or better still a power line link to a new access point. So there we have it, five simple guidelines. You may need to experiment a bit, but we hope that they will help you get the best Wi-Fi coverage that you can from your router.